Today I'm hitting the streets to find out if it's possible to sense people's thoughts through body language. One thousand round for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Cool. Want to win a thousand round? Yes. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to roll these up into a little tube like this. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to hide this money underneath one of these cups. Okay. But you need to turn your back. So turn your back, please. Okay, Joyce, you can turn around for me. Now tell me, be honest, can you tell which cup has the money underneath it? It's impossible to tell, right? Yeah, it's impossible. I mean, you can't see through the yeah. cups. Uh -huh. They're opaque. Yeah. But the money is here underneath cup number two. Okay. We'll do it again. <laughs> this time, I'm going to turn my back. Joyce, you will take the money. You'll put it into whichever cup you like, like this. You'll then turn this upside down. You can even mix the cups around if you like. And then you tell me to turn around when you've done that. Does it make sense? Okay. Right. Okay. Let me turn around. I'm not going to look. You can come back. I'm done. You're done? Yeah. Now where is it? Give me your hand. I want you in your mind to will my hand to go where the money is not. Okay? Put your hand gently there, gently, just gently there. Give me your other hand. Again, in your mind, will your hand to go where the money is not? If I'm correct, these should be the empty cups. The money should be underneath that cup. So empty, the money. Whoa, whoa. He told me to hide the money, and then and then when he turned around, he showed me where the money is. So, yeah. I don't know, it's unexplainable. If I'm correct, those should both be empty. The money should be under there. Yeah. So show me, both of them empty, show me. The money's right there. Wow. That's fine. Well done. I thought I had it. I thought I could mix it up a little bit, but he's really good. I think I was trying to hide it on my face more so that he can't see what, where I put it, but you won. Turn them up, that should be empty. The money is here, <laughs> right here, yes. I don't know. I think he could probably feel, you know, pulse or something. Maybe like a jungle. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> like a feeling, I don't know. It was weird, but cool. <laughs> could be psychic. <laughs> Put your hand there, Sophie. Now, if you win the money, what are you going to do? Are you going to split it with your friends? Yes. Okay? Yeah, yeah. All right. If I'm correct, those should be the empty cups. The money should be under cup number one. Empty, show me. Empty, the money's there, yes? <laughs> like, he was there, man. Like, he saw it. Because he wasn't looking while I was hiding the money. He wasn't looking, but, dude, he's amazing. Show me. Empty, the money's there, yes! <laughs> Warrant Officer DeToy, if you could maybe just tell me a little bit about the firearms that you guys carry out in the field. Yeah, we use uh, SAPS issued. Uh, standard 9 by 19 millimeter Beretta pistols at the moment. It's got a sliding action on top. It takes a, a 15 cartridge magazine. It, it can fire up to 120 rounds per minute, depending on how quick the, 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 the magazine changes can be done. Well, I'm going to put these on just for safety. And that is indeed uh, empty, correct? Uh, it's completely empty. Okay. And you guys are also all armed. If you could just remove your firearms now and just check for me and make sure uh, that they are not loaded. Place your firearms back into their holsters for me now, please. I believe you have one live round with you. If you could take that out, please. Yes, yeah, we do. It's a standard NATO caliber, 9 by 19 millimeter. 
It fires full metal jacket, copper with a, with a lead core uh, projectile. We need to make this bullet unique. And the way that we'll do that is uh, I'm gonna write a, a number generated by you guys. So um, if you can just give me a number between zero and nine. Three. Three, there we go, so three. If you can give me a number, sir. I'll take five. Five. Number from you? Uh, number seven. Seven. Zero. Zero. So there we have a unique number generated by you guys. So it's three, five, seven, and zero. This bullet is unique. And I'm gonna place it right here. Okay. Now in a moment, I'm gonna turn away. I'm gonna look away. Uh, I'm gonna have another officer come and make sure that I can't hear anything and make sure that I can't see anything. And whilst my back is turned, I want one of you to step forward, take the bullet, and load it into your gun. So if we can have the other officer please come and join me here now. I'll stand here, I'll remove my specs. If you could just put the earmuffs on me, please. And if you could just place your fingers just gently in my eyes. And if one of the officers could remove the bullet and load it into his gun now. Is that done? Okay. Can you remove these for me? All right, thank you very much. So, one of you removed the bullet and has loaded it in the gun, correct? Okay, now I couldn't see, I couldn't hear, and now I'm going to try my best to define who that person is. So I'm just gonna take your right hand here like this, and I want you to imagine drawing your firearm, you're getting ready to aim, I want you to imagine now that you're aiming at the target. Just relax a little bit for me, good. And imagine pulling the trigger now. Okay, very good. I want you to imagine now aiming at the target, pulling the trigger now. Imagine you're seeing that target now and you're firing now. You're aiming and imagine yourself firing now. I'm gonna say just straight off the cuff, that your gun is empty. Can you please remove your gun and show the camera your gun is empty? Am I correct? Yes, it is empty. Okay, very good. And I'm gonna say, just off the cuff, your gun is also empty. Can you please remove it for me and show the camera? Am I correct? Yes, you Okay, can. fantastic. So it's down to you two gentlemen. One of you has that loaded round, that unique bullet with your number on it. I'm gonna ask you two to please come and join me over here. Come with me now. So in front of you now are targets. Only one of you has this bullet. So for one final time, I want you now just to imagine drawing your weapon, imagine taking aim, and imagine firing now. Good, put your hands down. Okay. If I touch you on the shoulder, that means that I believe you have the loaded bullet. And if I touch you on the shoulder, that means you need to draw your weapon and fire at the target immediately. Three, two, one. If you can just uh, find the bullet for wherever, wherever it landed, will you take out uh, your gun and just show us that it is indeed empty? Is it indeed empty? Okay. Did you able to get it? All right. Just have a look on the bullet. That is indeed the bullet that you fired. That's correct. It still has the markings on it. Can you just read the numbers again? Um, three, five seven and zero. Three, five, seven, zero. That's the number that you guys came up with. And, and, and a pretty good shot as well, I must say, at such a quick, a quick draw. Um, but I have to kind of show you guys something. Not only did I find the bullet, but uh, I want to show you this. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> so my question to you is, 
Was this mind reading or mind writing? Uh, I'm still a bit lost there. I didn't know all of this was going to happen, especially the last number that was going to be on the target, so still confused. Speechless. <laughs> it's, it's quite amazing, considering there's, there's no prediction available, you, so you can't just guess the number and, and, and be lucky to figure out four digits in a row and they, and they stay in the same sequence, so I think it's quite amazing. Uh, I really cannot say because I did everything calmly as possible, not to give away anything, but somehow he just read through me. Right now it's time for you to experience the power of your own mind. Grab a string about this length, get a key or a ring, a heavy object that you can attach to the end, because after the break, I'm going to show you how to read your own mind. Now it's time to see if your mind and your pendulum are in sync. Hold your pendulum above the palm of your hand. Imagine a line from your second finger down to the end of your wrist. Now you have to believe in yourself, otherwise this won't work. In a moment, you're going to ask yourself a question. Now because it's your first time, make sure it's a question that is simply yes or no answer. If the answer is yes, the pendulum will swing back and forth across that imaginary line. If the answer is no, it'll swing in a circle. Are you ready? Ask yourself that question now. Lindy, you're a psychology student, so you probably know that in psychology it's often suggested that one of the most complicated processes that our brains can make is a decision. Mm. So I'm going to have you make a quick decision. Heads. Tails. Heads. You're going to call heads. Okay, here we go. Tails, unfortunately. But, Lindy, there was no real reward or consequence for your decision, so it didn't really matter, right? No. Let's make a decision that has a reward. Do you have your purse on you? Yes, I do. Can I take it from you? Okay. I'm gonna pop it in here. Close this up. I have a lock here. Okay. And I have some keys. Can you place your right hand out for me like this? Give you those keys. Take one key and I want you to try it on the lock for me. See if it opens the lock. Nope, no. nothing. Okay, so drop it in there. Try the next one. Nope. No. Also no. Nothing. Nope. Okay, none of them, right? That's because the only key that opens that lock is here. So just check that for me, please. It does open it, all right? So, let's dump the key in there, and I'm going to pop this lock on here. Locked on there. Yes. Put your hand on top, give it a shake. Do you know which key opens the no. lock? Consciously, you don't know. No. But subconsciously, you do. I want you just to lay the keys out in a row for me from that side to here. Okay, very good. And I'm sure you've heard in psychology of something called the idiomotor response. Yes. Now the idiomotor response is tiny muscle movements that are in relation to your subconscious thoughts, okay? okay. I have a pendulum here. Okay. And a pendulum is what will help those subconscious thoughts be brought into a physical action. So I want you to hold this uh, pendulum between your first finger and thumb, and you'll find that if your subconscious is talking to you, that pendulum will slowly rotate in a circle. If it's not communicating with you, the pendulum will either not move, or it'll just move back and forth in a straight line. Okay. I think it's that one, yes. right? Yeah, that's right. Very good. So it's definitely this one, okay? Yes. 
All I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push this key forward like that, okay? And I'll place the pendulum here with that key. That's the one that your subconscious mind was communicating to you, so not this key. <laughs> not this one. No. Not this one. No. <laughs> and not this one. No. This one. Yes. Take it. Let's see if your decision has paid off. Wow. Wow. Now that's a decision with a reward. I'm amazed. I was a big skeptic, but this is real. <laughs> I felt it going round and round and round. It was amazing. This is mind-blowing. I never thought that my mind was capable of doing that and directing me to the right key. Okay, I think there's no doubt that it's, it's the first one, okay? So on this key here, you didn't feel anything. It didn't move, this one here, right? Got a hammer. <laughs> and this final key. That's the one that your subconscious mind was communicating to you for. Give it a try. <laughs> Look at that. That's crazy. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. So it was a simple experiment can actually, yeah, it has quite a profound effect. Yeah. It is pretty powerful and you can do a lot more than you envisage that you could. Jack, tell me, when you were younger, did you ever play the game Hide and Seek? Uh, yeah, obviously. Well, today, you're going to play the biggest game of Hide and Seek in your life. So, Jack, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me, man. You're obviously well known for your music, but you're also well known for your fashion sense. So. Would you mind just talking me through just some of the significance of the items that you wear? Yeah, well, I don't know about fashion sense. It's maybe a bit of an oversighting, but I've got like a long hat, which is uh, which I've been which I've had forever, which has kind of become my trademark and my and my snore, my mustache, and then this one I, I actually have from I shot a video called Dance on Dance, like it was like the second video I ever shot. Um, so it's it, I shot it in Atlantis, and um, it's it's uh, it's a special video to me, and this was the chain that they made for me for the video, so I've had it for very long. Brilliant. So, would you mind if I have a look at it? Yeah, of course, anytime, no worries. Okay, so, wow, okay, there we go. So, would I be correct in saying that this chain has a little bit of Jack Parrow in it? No, yeah, definitely. Okay. Jack, tell me, when you were younger, did you ever play the game Hide and Seek? Uh, yeah, obviously. Well, today, you're gonna play the biggest game of Hide and Seek in your life. In a moment, you're gonna think of a location somewhere in the city, anywhere in the city, and then I'm gonna give you half an hour to go and hide, and I'm gonna try and find you using nothing but your chain. Jeez, okay. So, uh, just close your eyes for me. Okay. I want you just to close your eyes, and I want you now just to think of a location in Cape Town. It can be any location you like, and feel free to change your mind as many times as you like, and just take a few seconds to do that for me now. Looks like you've, you've, you've got somewhere, okay? Mm -hmm. You can open your eyes. So you have a location in mind? Okay. Yep. Now, in a moment, you're gonna drive off into the city and you're gonna go and hide. I'm gonna try and find you using this chain. But before we do that, we need to make sure everything is on the up and up. Okay. So I need you just to come and examine the car. So cool. come with me, let's go check it out. Okay, Jack, here's your car. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you just to examine it, make sure there's absolutely no GPS or tracking system or anything like that, really. Mm -hmm. Go wild, check it out. Perfect. Right. Let me check. I'm actually gonna have to take this cap off. I might hurt someone. Looks good to me. 
Okay, so you have examined the car and you're happy with it. There are two GoPros on the dashboard. Our crew are not gonna come with you. There's no ways that we can track you or follow you. And you have half an hour to go hide somewhere in the city and hopefully I'll be able to find you. Nice. And All right, off you go. Let go. <laughs> I found you! <laughs> Yo! Crazy, dude! Um, oh, I can't believe it! I think I should give that back to you. Yes, so. Yo, well done! Quite shocked a bit, sorry. <laughs> Lekker! You told me I must go and uh, I must think of a place where I, where, where I should go. Where, well, go and hide and he'll find me. So I visualized it and, and, and thought of the place. Obviously checked the car as I was driving as well. I was checking behind me, there was nothing, there's no one following me and stuff. I drove a really long way especially. I drove like all the way over the neck through like camps by Clifton around, like all the way side. So I didn't come directly here. And yeah, I've been sitting here for like 10 minutes or so and it's, and it's already fun. It's insane, yeah, just so, it's, it's, uh, it's mind blowing, yo. I think I mustn't give this necklace to many people then, obviously. Because <laughs> I don't like it when people find me. Please, please, man, I need, to, I need to get off this thing. Please. This is the key to that lock. Absolutely no. Brian Miles is amazing. <laughs> 